Hey, welcome everybody. So my name is Herbert. And if you're a Tesla investor, it's been a fantastic day, a fantastic week, and it's been a fantastic month. And so we want to hear more about where do we think this stock is going to continue to go grow? And there's still some people who are shorts and think otherwise. So I invited today my friend Christian. He is a long-term Tesla investor. He has joined me on a podcast called Cyberbulls. Welcome, Christian. How are you doing? What's up, Herbert? Glad to join you. And uh, it's been exciting the last few days to see the stock recover. So glad to have a chat about it. All right. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happened to the stock. So this is what it looks like a day. Just today, I stopped it at 10 o'clock today, uh, Pacific time. And you can see that it's still rising today, despite the fact that, yes, this week, it's already been a great jump, and especially around the earnings call, which happened on Wednesday. And if you take a look at what's been happening in the last month, it's also been a steady rise from its absolute low of 105. And of course, if we take a look at what happened in the last three months, it's fallen significantly from where it is and still got a ways to go. So Christian, I'm curious to hear you from you. Where do you think this is headed and what's going to happen to the stock in the, in the near term? Yeah, absolutely. So um, just to give a little bit of color, like a last, you know, I don't know exactly when, but I think we hit like 101. So I don't know exactly when that was a week ago, two weeks ago, when everything was just, you know, we, we, we clipped 101 and everybody says the stock's going to 80, the stock's going to 60. And um, this, the, you couldn't get the sentiment any worse. So, you know, the Q4 came and the numbers weren't bad. Elon got on the call. He talked about demand. He put that to rest. He talked about production and, 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 and the orders being 2x that. So it kind of just put a floor on the stock. And now we've rallied. I think a lot of people were short the stock, thinking it was going to go lower. They were trying to put like, you know, the death nail into Tesla. And we've kind of stopped that. And now we've accelerated, I think, almost 70 plus percent off that 101 tick. And it's just been great to see. Um, I think people are realizing that Tesla is, you know, when it's all said and done and you forget about margin sales and Elon and Twitter and all this stuff, you get back to the business and you see what they did in the financials with the energy business growing, with the margins getting better, with, you know, even 1.8 million units and possibly 2 million units. Since the stock got destroyed so much, that was enough for a lot of people who've been waiting for Tesla to come in to become new investors and start to position because they missed the first run up. So it's super exciting to see. It's super exciting to see the stabilization of the stock. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to 2023, even though it's going to be challenging. I think Tesla is one of the most resilient co uh, companies in the world. And Elon Musk, Elon Musk is one of the most entrepreneurial resilient people in the world. He's been through everything. And I think he's going to get through this one too. I do too. And, but it's shocking to me that there are still people who think otherwise. So let's take a look at this clip. This is being played by CNBC. So let's go ahead and just listen to this. The, the bounce has sort of been extraordinary. I don't know that in this particular name, the fundamentals and what you think they earn, all of that kind of doesn't matter. It's all about sentiment. And it's all about is, is the worst, the worst of the bad news for Elon, maybe now over. I don't know, but uh, it seems like that's the case. I don't own it here. It's, you know, it's just a, a stock that I can't. I believe in the charts, but I, I can't get their own fundamentals. Yeah. So that was uh, Karen Feinerman. And I like Karen, but, you know, that whole crew, for the most part, is very negative on Tesla. She talks about fundamentals. I think she says the same line every time. The fundamentals are, aren't there. Literally, they printed for the year $4 plus in earnings. And the stock literally was at 100. It was trailing 25 times trailing basis for a company growing 50, 60, 70% revenues and earnings. So when does the fundamental case get to be good when you're trading so cheap? It's never a good fundamental story. It's always about Elon and it's always about charts. It's never about the actual business. Do they know they have an energy business? Do they know they're you know, making a humanoid robot in a couple of years? Maybe we're going to see that. Do they know about, you know, Tesla insurance? Do they know about, even though it's small, they have so much more than just a car company and, you know, a cult following. So I think the, we're going to hear about something like that later. So I just feel Tesla doesn't get the respect they, that they deserve on that show. The level of engineering talent is unheard of. It's unmatched. Elon Musk, what he's done in his career with SpaceX, I just, I think they treat it like, uh, you know, a play stock rather than one of the greatest businesses in the world, one of the greatest businesses ever to exist, and probably the greatest story 
over the last decade that we've ever seen. What's your thinking of why this is happening? I mean, obviously, we understand that mainstream media has a yeah. negative bias against Tesla and against uh, Elon because they don't advertise, because they're they're trying to make sure that the OEMs, but just hatred for any time that, you know, a big um, a company is actually attacking, has the gall to actually attack uh, industries and break it open. But this kind of analysis, is there some kind of like, are they making this up on their own? Or do they truly believe that this is the case when, you know, looking at the business? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, it's probably a little bit with the advertising, but I think it has to go a little deeper than that. I think a lot of these uh, media types, and, and I'm sure they're good people, but the way they perceive, you know, Tesla and Elon, I don't know it's because they don't own the stock. So, you know, they want it to go down because they're not going to benefit if it goes up. You know, it's hard to put my you know finger on it, but I feel that they just, it, their, their worldview is so rock solid that anything that enters in that doesn't match, they, they can't understand it. So they can't understand, you know, automobiles maybe, you know, in the next few years driving themselves. They can't understand that Tesla is more than a car company. Do they understand that mega packs are getting delivered and they're already doing billions in revenue? They can't understand that they're the only automotive company that actually sells insurance with the car. No other automotive company does that. And I hate to compare them to automotive companies because they're not, but again, it's another thing. They're an AI company. Elon talks about it a million times, but you never hear that. He, they have chips that compete with NVIDIA. They, you know, they probably are the leading AI company in the world. Of course, they're kind of new to it, but not really, because with the software with FSD, and now they're doing the hardware with the humanoid robot. These are major disruptions that you know, CNBC just kind of glosses over, or doesn't even gloss over. They just completely ignore it, and they just want to talk about you know, charts and Elon's behavior and you know, it's overvalued because even when it's undervalued, it has to be under overvalued because it's always been overvalued. It's not anymore. It's it, it's it's fair value, if anything. OK, wonderful. So let's go play another clip from CNBC. And she actually calls him Mr. Tesla Q, man. So let's listen to this. <laughs> yeah. So um, listen, I've been negative on the story. Um, I was long puts into the print. They're gone to zero. They're worthless. I had a bad trade there. Um, but again, you know, I had some good ones on the downside um, last year here. And today I put a fresh, I did buy that TLSQ um, at, you know, equivalent of $159 in the stock. It closed at 160 here today. And, and again, you know, I'd love to see, the stock's probably going to 170 in the not so distant future. Um, and I'd love to see what Carter's take is um, at that point. I, you know, the fact of the matter is, listen, I don't have something against Elon. I just don't trust him. And people ask me all the time, you know, what is one of the major reasons why you would buy a stock, why you would buy into a company and management and their transparency and their trustworthiness and their ability to kind of execute to the things that they've said. Think about that conversation we just had about Intel. And I don't believe him. And he has demonstrated um, on probably dozens of occasions over the last 10 years that he doesn't really, you know, the truth is not something that he is solving to all the time. So there's uh, thousands of other stocks out there that you can buy unless you think that this cult or this one in particular is so unique. And I'll just say the last thing, you know, one of the reasons we talked about competition, it has been a pillar of the bear case for a long time. And bulls will tell you it just hasn't happened. Well, 40% of their sales come in China. They have less than 10% market share. Elon said on their call, that their competition in China is the real deal. And I just think that that's the battleground for this company going forward. You think of the reliance on manufacturing there, the reliance on rare earth materials for the batteries over there. I just don't think this is a great story here. All right. Well, yeah. it's a cult. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he doesn't so, trust the one. Yeah. So, you know, he's been negative on the story forever. Like he's never been positive on the Tesla story. I think the stock could go to 20 and he still would say, you know, it's overvalued. So his credibility is like at zero. You know, you hear him say the world cult, he's biased. He probably, you know, he, he missed the first run. So he's not made any money in Tesla. Now he's shorting it. His puts are going to zero. You know, he's shorting it, even though he thinks it's going to 170. Why, why, why are you buying TSLQ at 160 if you think it's going to 170? That made no sense. Again, complete lack of understanding the story. He talks about um, Elon saying China you know, on the call, Elon said that he's doing great in China, that Tesla's, you know, doing amazing in China, especially in their category. And they're printing money like unbelievable in China. So, you know, he's twisting that whole story around. So he's just full of negative bias. And as far as Elon goes, is he perfect? No. Does he make a lot of mistakes? Yes. Is he the greatest entrepreneur that's ever lived? Probably yes. Like you can make a case that he absolutely is the greatest entrepreneur ever. Now you could debate it, but 
you know, it's out there. And for him to just constantly, every time he talks, just dismiss Tesla and all his ventures and as, you know, this or that, it's, it's just so disingenuous. And, um, you know, just, just, just it, it's not worth anything. It's just the same dribble every time, rather than getting actually into what is the business is doing, what, what is the revenue, what does the growth look like? Are they the dominant, you know, leader in EVs in the world? Yes. In the U.S., yes. So, you know, that's where we need to be talking, not about this nonsense that they love to go on about. Okay, one more clip. Let's take a look at the, this guy's from uh, CNBC. And, let's, and again, you know, they seem to be focused on the automotive side of things. So let's focus on it. Declining margins is something that, you know, is it a one quarter thing? I think not. Typically, when you start that downward trajectory, it continues. And there is competition, clearly. I mean, the China story is, I think, um, somewhat mixed at best, if not challenged. And they're probably going to have a supply glut here in the United States. And to your point about PE, you know, you look at it at a place at price to revenue. I mean, they're trading close to four times revenue, which, all right, maybe they're deserving of some type of premium. You look at the other auto manufacturers, I mean, Ford and GM traded less than one time revenue. So I'm not suggesting it should go there. And Ford and GM were probably too cheap. But this stock has rallied probably 40% over the last couple of months. It was in a downward spiral. I don't think this does anything to accelerate it to the upside from here. Okay, so that's uh, that was a pretty fiery uh, and, and pretty strong statement. What did you think about that, Christian? Yeah, so that's Guy Adami. Um, you know, he's okay, but he's very, you know, just a generalist. He's talking about supply glut. Uh, and, did he not see the price cuts? Does he not uh, ever hear about the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act? Did he not listen to the conference? You know, I don't know at that time it was the conference call yet, but does he not understand that these things are happening and that Tesla is the market leader? He wants to compare it to Ford and GM, but then say, I don't want to compare it to Ford and GM. Well, the market has never treated Tesla like a Ford and GM. That's why they get a premium multiple, because it's a new type of technology. It's batteries. He doesn't understand that the internal combustion engine is not the future. It's going away. Governments are getting rid of it. By 2030, EVs are going to be the dominant um, mode of transportation. So the reason GM and Ford get those low multiples is because the business of 95% plus of their business is going to be extinct in about five to 10 years. So the reason Tesla gets the multiple is because they're growing their earnings. It's because they're the future. The technology that they're doing is going to be what the future is. And that's how you price stocks. So he acts like, you know, Tesla is you know, the new company that just popped out of the woodwork. You know, Tesla has been a great stock. So as much as he wants to say it's been a downward spiral, if you own the stock, which they clearly don't, um, you, you've done, you know, wonderful over the last 10 years. But, you know, this is the s same old stuff comparing it to these car companies that, you know, the comparison is just it's just silly. You know, Ford and GM doesn't have energy businesses. They're not building humanoid robots. They don't even sell insurance to their people. They're loaded up with debt while Tesla's balance sheet is the best balance sheet in the world. So again, it's just this nitpicking, same old talk, you know, to fit the narrative. The stock price is going down. This must be true rather than, you know, there's other things going on that, that knocked the price down and the true value is now being shown again. So, you know, typical stuff, but, you know, that's the NBC. Yep. Well, I'm a Tesla bull. You're a Tesla bull. And there's people with different information and it's great for us to listen to it, but there's yeah. also a lot of misinformation, disinformation, and it's so good that you were able to at least address it and try to counter what you heard. Thank you so much, Christian. I really appreciate this. This was great. And I hope the audience appreciate it as well. We'll do more of these soon. Thank you, Herbert. Thank you, Herbert.